Good afternoon. My name is Eric Rutherford, and welcome to Theory. Uh, so good to see all of you here today. Uh, we've got a, a quick lesson, so uh, we'll be moving pretty quickly through this. Um, so uh, get your pencils out and get ready to write. Uh, today we're going to be talking about cadences. So we've already learned about harmonic sequences, we've already learned about triads and inversion, we've already learned about all sorts of great things in music. Uh, but now it's time to start talking about form, the architecture of music, how music is put together. And one of the most important building blocks in that form is a cadence. A cadence is the, the, the stopping spot, uh, a resting place in music. Your ears are already accustomed to hearing it because we've been listening to music with cadences in it all semester. But now we're going to be able to identify exactly what those cadences are. Think about cadences in terms of language. A cadence is, um, a punctu is punctuation, so like a, like a period or a comma, a question mark, an exclamation point. All it basically is is a place in the harmony where we feel like a complete thought is done and we're moving on to that next thought. Okay? We've got five different kinds of cadences we're going to cover today in short. And then in further lessons, we will tear each cadence apart and talk about all the, the rest of it. But today, we're just going to introduce them. So, the first cadence that we're going to talk about today is the authentic cadence. This is probably like the most important cadence because this, these cadences are the cadences that bring us to a true stopping place in the music. And there are two different kinds, as I said. There is a perfect, authentic cadence. Think of this as like the exclamation point in music. And there's the imperfect, authentic cadence, which is like a period. Very strong, but not quite as definitive as a perfect, authentic cadence. So let's take the perfect, authentic cadence first. Perfect Authentic Kings, abbreviated PAC, is a 5 chord to a 1 chord. And if you look at the TV, you'll see our harmonic sequence that we're already quite familiar with. So, it's a 5 chord or a dominant chord going to a 1 chord, and it has two very specific rules that must be followed for it to be a perfect authentic cadence. The first rule is that it must be in root position. Must be, no ifs, ands, or buts, it must be in root position. The second interesting rule for a perfect authentic cadence is that in the soprano part in this situation, or in the highest sounding voice, uh, in the one chord of the tonic chord, you must have the tonic pitch. So, let me play this for you, and you're going to hear immediately that you've probably heard me play this a million times in other places. So, five chord, in root position. An imperfect authentic case, as I already mentioned, is like a period. So basically, any time we're not following those two rules, five chord to a one chord, root position with tonic in, as the highest sounding pitch in the tonic chord, it is an imperfect authentic case. So we've got some choices here. We can go a 5 to a 1 and just have them in inversion. We can even go from 7 to 1 because 7 is still a dominant chord. All we have to do is make sure we don't follow those rules and we have an IAC or an imperfect authentic case. And you can see right here, I've got a 5 chord going to a 1 6 chord, so our 1 6 is in inversion. It can't be perfect, it's got to be imperfect. Let me play it for you. Now remember, this is not going to sound significantly different than the perfect authentic cadence. It's just, it's still definitive, just slightly weaker. So I'm going to use a 7 to a 1. So here's 7. Our next cadence we're going to talk about is a tricky cadence. It's called the deceptive cadence. This is a really interesting cadence because composers use this to fool you. Essentially, our ears, because uh, we probably have heard a lot of Western music uh, throughout the course of our lives, maybe, uh, our ears, or even in just in this class, our ears are accustomed to hearing that dominant to tonic relationship. And so in a deceptive cadence, composers play around with that subconscious need for five to go 
goes one. So instead of five going to one, it's deceptive or it fools you. Five goes to another chord. Most frequently, probably 85 or 95% of the time, five will go to a six chord. So let me show you how that works. So you're playing, you're just you're going along your little progression, you got a one chord. When they're they're coming to a spot where they feel like they might have almost uh, have almost completed a thought, but yet it's like, but wait, there's, there's just a little bit more on the end here, and I want to add it in. So I'll use a deceptive cadence, and then later on in the thought, I'll finish it out with what everyone's ear is waiting for: the perfect authentic cadence. Our next cadence is the half cadence. So the half cadence right here, abbreviated HC, is any chord going to five at one of those cadence points, at one of those resting stops in the music. This is probably the most unstable cadence of all of them. So you should think of this as like a comma. Think of it as like a comma. This is like a comma cadence. So uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of a thought, and then I get to a spot where that thought's sort of dying out just a little bit, and I go, oh, wait, wait, we're, we're still going, okay? So it's really just a resting spot, not a definitive ending. And these are probably the most frequent cadences you're going to run into outside of the perfect authentic cadence at the end of a piece of music, which, as we've learned in tonal harmony, is the end goal for everything. We must get to that tonic chord at the end. So half cadence, any chord to a five chord. So we're just trucking along here. unstable that sounds. It doesn't sound like we want to be done. There's more to talk about. So, you know, it's like, I'm going to the store, and I'm going to buy some cookies. So it's really two complete, uh, two, two ideas, but they revolve around each other. Our final cadence that we're going to talk about today is the plagal cadence. Uh, this is a really interesting cadence, sometimes called the church cadence, because uh, this particular cadence is used in a lot of Christian religious music. If you've ever been to a church service or heard, heard a hymn on, the, on television or something like that, uh, you might have heard this cadence. This cadence, abbreviated PC, is a four chord to a one chord. And it's not often used as a definitive ending for anything. It's more often used as a tag. So uh, that's why it's called the church cadence, because often in uh, Christian church music, there is an amen at the end, and uh, that amen is usually a plagal cadence. So we might be going along, and we get to uh, a big old uh, PAC, so we got a five to a
then our half kings, comma kings, anything to five at a resting spot. So we're going to do a, we'll do a three to a five this time just to be interesting. Three. And finally, our plagal cadence, four to one. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about the cadences today. As I said, we will tear them apart in more detail in future lessons. But this gives you an idea of the form of uh, the beginning form that we're learning about and about one of the most important building blocks. I hope you've enjoyed your lesson. Thank you.